Ready? God bless you. Welcome to another Wednesday night service. I'm Pastor Marcus. It is a pleasure to be here with you tonight. It really is a pleasure. Um, let me see. Let me get my announcements here. We want to remind you that our Sunday morning service is open. All the other services are being, um, um, are being um, streamed on all the platforms. Our Wednesday night service, which is tonight, our Sunday morning service, even though it's, um, it's live, we're still doing the, the, the feed. We're still doing the streaming. And Friday night prayer um, with Pastor Richard, at 7.30 p.m. Um, I want to make an announcement. Um, Richard uh, is going to have to cancel tomorrow's morning prayer. He says he wants to apologize, and he misses you all, but he will see you Friday morning. Let me see what else. Children, youth have their iron groups with Pastor Q Fire. Please go to the web page and register. Just follow the promptings. It is a good time to get your children worded up during this downtime. Children's Church, they have animated Bible lessons for the elementary school. And I'm telling you right now, I watch them. You can learn from the illustrations. I almost took something from the illustrations to use it <laughs> here tonight. They are really good. And the little ones have the story time, Bible stories for the, young, for the little ones. Let me see, did I miss anything? Oh, Friday um, morning healing school with myself. And prayer requests. We want to make sure that if you have any prayer requests, go to our webpage and follow the promptings. There is a place there where you can request a prayer for yourself, for somebody, whoever it may be that needs prayer. And it also says if you want to be contacted, there's a place to, where you can uh, sign off if you want to be contacted. Um, and please, don't hesitate to call at this time. I know there's a lot of people who may need prayer. Don't hesitate to call. We love to pray with you. Let me see. Am I missing anything? Uh, no, but I did. Um, you all know, and if you've been watching the news, that there's a storm out there. But we know on everything we've learned here, praise God, we've learned so much um, pertaining to the bloodline. We do overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And um, boy, I'll tell you, I'm going to start getting teary-eyed. Praise the Lord. Um, Pastor Stan got the revelation of putting the 300, the 200 mile marker around Florida, around South Florida, to keep us safe under the shelter of the blood. And tonight, let us, um, let us declare together that we're enforcing the bloodline. You know what? As a point of contact, use your finger. We're enforcing the bloodline around Southeast Florida, 100, 200, 300 miles out. We're enforcing it around our properties, our families, and we're not allowing this hurricane or this storm or any hurricane or storm, whatever name it has, because the name of Jesus is above every name. We command that storm. We, we bind them, those storm, in the name of Jesus, and we declare we loose atmospheric conditions to steer and minimize and destroy the storm in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. You've authorized us. You've given us power over all the power of the enemy. You have elevated us. We're sitting in heavenly places right now in Christ over principalities, powers, over hurricanes, over every storm. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that that storm will not cross, cross the bloodline and it's dissipating because we're speaking sharing winds to it in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone that believes said, amen, amen, amen. Um, let me see, what else? Yes, Richard says he misses you, and he'll see you again Friday morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Tonight, um, we have a, a lot of ground to cover. Last, um, last week, thank God, we, um, we started speaking of the revelation that God gave me pertaining to that he has made us to sit. And I'm not going to go to that scripture right now. I'm going to go to what I have written down. Tonight it says we are the invisible realm. Once an invisible realm is conceived and we're awakening of our new reality and the only limits of, your, of our reality is hedged in by our own fallen Adamic intellect, our imagination. That's why the renewing of our minds is not optional. This is why it's so vital. Because faith... You can write this down. Is the spiritual structure of the invisible world and the kingdom and your life. And it, it is also the bridge out of death and darkness into the supernatural life of the new creation. And I just got arrested by the Holy Ghost. He said, you started this without me. Oh, hallelujah. Can't do that. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Holy Ghost. You are, you are most welcome. We thank you. I, I can do nothing without you. And I thank you for being here in our service tonight. We welcome you, Spirit of Truth. We welcome you, anointing. We thank you that you have anointed me tonight to speak clearly this divine truth, Father God, that is able to destroy yokes and remove burdens and open the eyes of our understanding so that we can know what is the blessed hope of your calling? And what are the riches in the glory, which is your inheritance in the saints, which is the power that you use to raise Christ Jesus from the dead? And that power is towards us. I'm going to start again. We're going to be talking about the invisible realm. And when an invisible realm is conceived, once something is conceived, you will carry their voice. Your voice will carry from that dimension. That's why we, we are awakening, we're being awakened, uh, we're being awakened to our new reality. And the only limitations we have to our new reality is as a man thinks. So the Adamic intellect, the imagination, is what's hedging us from keeping and walking into everything that God has provided for us. The super on natural. See how, see how simple that is? It may seem like, ooh, but it's not. The supernatural is just super. It's above the natural. So it's not anything that's spooky, but it's actually you and I have been called to live there. And the way in there and the way to live and move and have our being in there is by faith. It is the spiritual truck structure of the invisible world. It is also the bridge. Because, you know, um, I remember I did a message on, on bridges. You and I are walking in invisible realms all day long. We're communicating with invisible things all day long. As a man thinks, you're having conversations all day long. You're crossing bridges that you create. You've already come to the conclusion of matters without even, um, even having reached that point yet. So you see, you're operating in faith, calling the things that be not or seeing things that be not as though they are. You have crossed the bridge and you have already declared the end from the beginning, whether you realize it or not. We're operating in the unseen all day long. But today, we're going to put structure to that unseen. So the spiritual structure of the invisible world and the bridge out of death and darkness into the supernatural life, our new creation in the kingdom of God. We are creatures in perpetual transformation. And tonight, we're going to start... Um, I'm going to go to the book of Romans because it speaks about... Um, being justified by faith, the just shall live by faith. And we're going to look at some of the, how can I say, the legal side and hopefully, not when I say legal, I'm not, talking, I'm not talking the law. I'm talking the things that have already been established and accomplished. And we also will get, by the grace of God, into the vital signs, the connection, the spiritual realities, being able to commune and exchange, being able to see the things that are not seen by natural eyes. But we go to Romans 5, verse 1 and 2 in the King James. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I want you to see it with your eyes. I want you to see every scripture that we have tonight. I want you to see it with your eyes. And I thank you, Lord. There it is. Therefore, being justified 
by faith. Notice the word justified. Actually, that word means just as if it had never happened. So faith brings you and I to a place within the, in the mind of God, in the eyes of God, we're completely innocent. And this is where we want to go tonight. We, you and I need to see ourselves from a different perspective, from God's point of view. We need to see ourselves as God sees us. I remember Paul talking to the, um, one of the uh, disciples. He says, um, I think it's in Galatians, but he says, um, how is it that after you know God or after you are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the beggarly elements? Do you desire to be in bondage again? I'm not going to scriptures. I'm going to this one right now. Therefore, being justified. So what is the justifier here? Who is the justifier? It's faith. Faith is the one that justifies you and me. So I guess it's very important to know what faith is, how it operates, what is the workings of faith. Because we know that faith says it's complete, it's done, it's finished. But prayerfully today we're going to come up a different side of the mountain, which I, I like to come up the different side of the mountain. But tonight, since justified, it's just as if it never happened. It says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. By whom also we have access. Listen, listen what faith does. Remember I said it takes us, it's the bridge that takes us from one, from death to life, from the natural to the supernatural. Right there it says, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Who is the glory of God? Who is the hope of the glory of God? Jesus himself, Christ in you, the very hope of glory. And that's a beautiful picture because it says, without faith, you and I can't see grace. It is a gift from God. It is by grace through faith. It is a gift that no man can boast. Then where is boasting then? It's excluded. By what law? By the law of faith, not the law of works. Hallelujah. So this faith, how, how it speaks. Let's, let's look at how faith speaks according to the word of God. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. And we'll start with verse 6. Thank you, Lord. It says right there, but the righteousness which is of faith speaks this wise. This is how faith speaks. The righteousness that is by faith. This is how it speaks. I'm going to read it from here. You can read it from up there. It speaks this wise. It says, it says, in I, it says I'm going to start again. But the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise. Say not in thy heart, who shall I send to heaven, that is to bring Jesus down, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Jesus Christ up again from the dead. But what says it? Verse 8. Thank you, Lord. But what says it? The word. It is, it is nigh thee, it's in thy mouth, and is in thy heart. That is the word of faith. Notice it's called the word of faith. We'll see in a moment that it's called the law of faith. I just, I just told you about it. By what law are we justified? By the law of works? No, by the law of faith. The word, um, going back, so um, verse 8. But what says it? The word. It's near you, it's even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is it, foundational as you can get. It may seem elementary, but stick with me because we're going somewhere. We don't want to presume what faith is any longer. If we've been justified by faith, and we'll see in a moment how vital faith is. We can't assume that we know what faith is. Yes, it is the substance of things hoped for, everything's unseen. I don't want to go and t you don't, I don't want you to tell me what is written. I want you to tell me what it is. Because if you can tell me what it is, then it's living inside you. You got me? All right. Um, did I read verse 9? Yeah, let me read it again. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart. Where's believing at? Where's believing at? In your heart. Where, what is your heart? It's your spirit. Amen. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Verse 10. For with the heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. With the heart. With the heart. With the heart, man believes. Thank you, Lord. Unto righteousness. 
and with the mouth there is a confession made unto salvation. Notice that in this particular case, it's talking about a confession to unto righteousness, which brings me salvation. Confession, faith is not just a confession. It's not just a confession. It's called the law. It's called the word. It's called the spirit. So we see here that it's, it's necessary. Nothing happens. Nothing comes into being without us giving voice to the word of God. But I, I want to make sure that you understand that it's not just faith. It's not just a confession. For this, verse 11, for the scripture says, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Verse 14. I'm kind of shortening it up. How then shall we call on him? Thank you, Lord. For how then shall we call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 17. This is the wonderful scripture you hear over and over. So the faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I want to stop there for a moment. Did you just hear what it said? Faith comes by hearing. There's not a time that you will hear the word of God spoken that faith doesn't bring, doesn't bring a gift, that faith is not present because faith affirms God as being God and nothing else. Faith is the spirit of God. Jesus is the revelation of faith itself. But it says here that faith comes. Faith never comes empty-handed, guys. That's why it's so vital that we understand when you hear faith, faith comes. And it not only um, is this now faith is the substance of things hoped for. We're not going to go to the scripture. I'm just quoting it. The evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So there's evidence there that your natural eye cannot see, the natural ear cannot hear, but there's evidence there that faith will unveil to you. It will reveal that substance from which God created the heavens and the earth. And that word, and that, Lord, and that, um, that is faith. I want to make sure that you understand that this is all relational. Let's go to 1 John 5. Four and five in the King James. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because once you understand that it's relational, you won't get caught um, in a ritual. You won't get caught in a theory. You won't get caught trying to confess your way into something when it's just, based, it could just be an empty confession because you've heard that if you say, 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 you, it first has to be, something has to be formulated inside you. When God in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and God said something, that didn't come from out there. The substance that he created, the heavens and the earth, came from inside of him. The very substance of that thing came out from him. So faith deposited in you is the very same substance that God uses to formulate everything. Praise the Lord. Uh, are we there yet? Thank you, Lord. Yeah, this is good. Because then you'll understand this, the, the relationship with faith and the victory. First John 5, 4 says, for whatsoever, for whatsoever is born of God, that's you and me. We've been born of God. You and I have been born of God. So whatsoever is birthed by God has overcome the world. The moment, the very second you accepted Jesus, that moment you became victorious, you became more than a conqueror, and you became an overcomer. And this is how it was. And this is the victory that overcomes this world, this world system. And this, this overcoming here, do I have it? Yeah. This overcoming here, if you look at other translations, um, when you break it down in the Aramaic, it actually says this is a continual overcoming the world system. So this is not a one-time hit and miss. You were born victorious. You were born in victory through faith, justified, just as if it never happened. God restored you and me and re, re, um, uh, restored everything 
that he intended his man to be. The first Adam blew it, the second Adam came, the Lord himself from heaven. So right there and there, we are overcome the world, even our faith. So who is he that overcomes this world? It says right there in verse 5. Thank you, Lord. Who is he that overcomes this world? He that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, I want to stop right there. I want to park for a moment right there. He that believes. We read earlier that he, if you believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. If you, these are the ones that overcome. If you believe. Didn't Jesus say that all things are possible? All things. All things are possible. Did he not say that? To who? To those who believe. And I could stop right there for a moment and say, all things. He stopped me. He said, stop, stop, stop there for a moment. He didn't say all things are possible to a believer in God. He says, all things are possible to those who believe. So you could be honestly believing in something that has been formed in your heart, but imposed on you from birth, because according to Second. Um, Ephesians 2, 2, and we're not going there by the scripture, it says, in times past you walked according to the course of this world. That's Ephesians 2, 2. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. And you were fulfilling the lust of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature. See, you were, we were born. So that's why the renewing of the mind by faith is so vital that we understand the intricacy is the workings of faith, what faith does and how it comes and what it looks like and how it talks. It says, for who it is that overcomes the world, but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. We have been translated. Now see, faith, remember, I take you, it's the bridge that translates us. Now I want you to see a bridge. Let's go to Colossians 1, 13. And this is in the um, King James. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is a wonderful uh, picture, scripture that I want you to see, see it in your mind's eye. I want you to, to see the movement. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There it is. It says, for who, Colossians was it says, who has delivered us, this talk about, for who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of God's dear son. Translation. There was a transfer. There's been a shift. There's been a change. Notice the word translate means to move from one state or condition to another. Get the picture. We are being delivered from the power of darkness. And let's go, you know what, let's go to um, Colossians 1.13 from the Passion. It also draws a good picture too. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. From the Passion. Yeah. It says, he has rescued us completely, completely. He has rescued us completely from the tyrannical rule of darkness and trans has translated us into the kingdom realm of his beloved son. In the kingdom realm, this is where faith operates, in the kingdom and in the world. It's, I, I don't like to use um, cliches words, but it is the currency of heaven and the currency that works also on the earth. Let me give you an example of this translation. I want to draw a picture. How, how, how many of you have gone to a foreign country? Can you use the money that you have to be able to purchase stuff in that nation, in that country? No, you have to exchange to the currency of that country. That's why I say I don't like to throw cliches out. It's the, it's the currency of heaven. But this is what it is. This is how you purchase. This is how you take. How, this is how you come out of darkness into the light from the natural to the supernatural, from life into death. This is the bridge that crosses us over. And it's amazing that in this realm this, that we've been delivered from and unto, this is where you and I, where the faith of God operates and allows us to see progressively things that eyes not seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man. Let's go to Romans 1, 17. Regular, um, we're going to the passion. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It says, 
We are creatures in perpetual transformation. It says this is the this gospel, this gospel which we preach, unveils a continual revelation of righteousness, a perfect righteousness given to us when we believe. And it moves us from receiving life through faith. See, remember I told you it's it's the bridge. Receiving life through faith to the power of living by faith, this is what the scripture means when it says that we are right with God through life-given faith. And the regular King James, I think it says that through faith, this, uh, the Aramaic has another little thing. It says through faith, the righteous enter into life. And the King James just says, the just shall live by faith. Now let's go to um, 2 Corinthians 5. I'm going to establish 2 Corinthians 5, 7, the passion. I'm going to establish why did, what the scriptures say pertaining to the legal side. Beautiful. To the legal side of faith. It's telling us some things. And we need to understand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. The passion. All right, here we go. For we live by faith, not by what we see with our eyes. See, I'm talking about a trans, we're talking about translating. We're talking about transitioning from a world that's seen. We don't longer live by what we see. We've been taken out of the realm, out of this darkness realm, which in times past we walked, uh, a dis according to the spirit that now is at work in the children of disobedience. By nature, we were children of wrath, fulfilling the lust of the flesh and of the mind. We were born in this thing. Now here we are being justified, just as if it never happened. So this brings us to a place where this is not optional. I may be going ahead of myself, but let's go, let's continue. The world's, by 2 Corinthians um, 5, 7 says, says, for we live by faith and not by what we see, not by sight, by our eyes. Because from what we come to understand, the worlds were framed by this very word that we call the word of faith. Let's go to Hebrews 11.3 in the King James. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, I'm going to say some things when God prompts me pertaining to the translation and the reasoning and how it is that we get from, from being able to escape the corruption that's in this world, being able to not live so we don't owe anything to the flesh. We don't owe the flesh anything because we're not in the flesh. We'll get there in a moment. Hebrews 11, 3. Here we go. It says, though through faith we come to understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so the things which are seen were not made from things which do appear. Hallelujah. In verse Hebrews 11, 6. Here we go. This is why I said it's vital. This is why I said it's absolutely vital that we learn what faith is and how it operates. Because right now, this is getting critical because it's going to put a demand. Faith of God, the law of the Spirit of God and the, the faith of God puts a demand on us. It says, through faith we understand that the world was seen, so the things which were made did not come from things which do appear. 11.6 it says, but without faith it is impossible to please him for those that come to God must believe that he is. He is what? That he is God. The believing is first, you gotta believe that he is God. Let's forget the benefits for a moment. You gotta believe that he is existing, that he is God. This is what faith does. It's a revelation of Jesus itself. Well, let's, keep, let's keep going. But he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we see faith is not negotiable. Say that to yourself. I know I'm not in the room with you. But say to yourself, faith is not negotiable in the eyes of God. Because we just read it. Without faith, I can't please God. Because in order to please God, I must believe that this is what he, this is how I got justified. This is how I'm able to approach God. Because I've been justified in the eyes of God, grace is able, to be, is, um, is able to be seen because of faith. And now I'm entering this place 
Or he says, he is the rewarder of those who diligently to seek him. So we see that faith, we see here, it's not negotiable. Let's go to Hebrews 10.38. I'm establishing the legal side of faith. Thank you, Lord. There we go. Now the just shall live by faith. Now get ready. Buckle down. That's why I said it's vital. It's absolutely vital. It's not optional. It's not negotiable. Because I, I got another scripture here that's really going to rock your world. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure Ooh, in him. In the book of Romans chapter 8, we're not going there. It talks about that to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life. We're going to go there in a moment because faith has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us. But let's go back. Let's go now. So see, we, the faith realm, I'm going to say it again. The faith realm is the spiritual structure of the invisible world. So let's go to Romans 4.23. This one is the one that you, that's, that's going to bring it home for you. So you can understand that when God's talking about faith, He's not, it's something that is necessary, that is vital for us, for the progression of us, because it is the actual structure of the invisible world. By faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. So we go to Romans 14, 23, and that is in the King James. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You guys ready? You guys reading what it's saying? You guys got it in your Bibles? You have it in front of you? It says, so whatever is not of faith. Ooh, did I say that? No, the scripture says that. The Bible says that. Romans 14, 23 says, whatever. So whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Why? Because faith is the very thing that justified you and me that crossed us out of darkness and death, the natural and the seen, and has crossed us over into the place where God abides. That's where God lives. God abides in faith or abides in the eternal, and that's where you and I need to allow faith to take us, to make us see how vital and how God sees faith and how powerful it is. How, how can I say it? <sighs> vital means like, when I say vital, I want, I want you to think about an... Um, um, uh, an organ, a vital part of your body. Let's say oxygen for a moment. When I say vital, I want you to think this way. I'm going to ask you to, when I say three, I want you to hold your breath until I say stop. One, two, three, hold your breath until I let you say you can breathe. We're talking about vital. Don't cheat. Keep holding your breath. Keep holding your breath. Keep holding your breath. <laughs> stop. No, no, you probably won't hold your breath. You see what I'm saying? I'm talking about that's how vital faith is to God. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For those that come to God must believe that he is. So here it is, that whatsoever is not a faith. Because why? Because if it's not a faith, it's you. Jeremiah 17 in the Amplified, this, this is... Um, this is a hard one. This, this goes straight for the juggler. But I need to um, kind of stamp. I need to stamp this on you to the point where you realize that God means business when it says the just shall live by faith. If you were justified by faith and justified to be able to stand in the presence of God, here we stand in the hope of the glory of God. How vital is it that we understand what faith does, what it will do? Ooh, mamma mia. Check that out. Thus says the Lord, cursed with great evil is the strong man who trusts in and relies on the frail man, making weak human flesh his arm, whose mind and heart turn aside from the Lord. And you're saying, well, no, I haven't turned aside from the Lord. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. I live by faith. In the book of Romans chapter 8, you know what? It wasn't scheduled to go there, but I want to go there. The book of Romans chapter 8, because this is really, um, man, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 8. Let's start, you know what, let's start with verse 1, because this is a transition. This is where faith is taking us, and let's just go to the regular King James. I know it wasn't in my notes. Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience. Um, 
You know what? I'm going to read it right off of there. It says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. What does the rest of that scripture say? Listen to what it's saying. Let your ears hear it. Say it out of your mouth. Verbalize it. Let it out of your mouth. Because you know what? Once you give voice to the word of God, it may be the only time you hear the voice of God audibly. Oh, you want me to say that in English? <laughs> when, you release, when you release the word of God out of your mouth, you're hearing the word of God. That's literally you are giving voice to the spirit of the word. That's just, if God, just as if God was speaking to you. That may be the only audible time, only time you audibly hear the voice of God. I'm messing with you. But look at this. So therefore, there is no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus. Notice what it says there. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Faith takes me out of the natural realm. Faith takes me out. Let's go to verse 2. And we're probably going to go all the way through... Um, to this chapter, if God permits, if this is where he's taking me, guys. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Verse 2. For the law, there it is, the spirit. It's called the, it's called the law now. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 3. Thank you, Lord. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh. Do you see, you see what I'm saying here, right here? What the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his only son in the likeness of sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. You see what he's saying right here? He's saying, the flesh couldn't do it. That's why I gave you faith, so I can be involved. Faith is the evidence that God is present in your life. Without it, you cannot please God. Without it, whatever's not a faith is sin. Why? Because it makes you bigger than God. It makes you the provider. It says here, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And right there it says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That's clear as day can be. And it says, for the law of the Spirit of life of Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 3, I Oh, I already had verse 3 up there. Verse 4, that's good. Well, well you guys are good. Verse 4. <laughs> For the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled. I'm going to tie 3 into 4. Keep 4 up there. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his only Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, again, who walk not after the flesh. This is evident that God is saying, I don't want you, I want to get you out of the way. I want you out of the way. That's why I gave you faith. That's why Abraham believed and it was accounted to him as righteousness. And when he said against hope, he believed in hope because the God, you see, God was getting all the glory there. Even God, the God who calls the things that be not as though they were. Verse 5, for they, thank you Lord, that are after the flesh, now watch this, mind, the things of the flesh, and those that are, um, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. And here it is, here's the drop, here's where it drops, here where the mic drops. To be carnally minded is death. What is, what is the wages of sin? What are the wages? He says, he, in the beginning, we're not going there scripturally, we just, I'm just throwing this out there. God said to Adam, I've given you everything on this, on this garden that I created for you, but it says one thing. Don't transgress what I'm telling you, the command that I give you. Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For the moment that you do, there's a death sentence attached to the commandment. You eat, you die. That's what happened to man. Once man fell, as soon as he fell, God came looking for him. He says, Adam, what condition are you in? And he kicked him out of the garden, out of the presence of God. What is death spiritually? What does death mean? It means to have not, to not be able to commune with God, to not have not God in presence, to not have his counsel, his glory, his essence, his, his direction, to not have God present. So to be carnally minded means that's you. You're doing all the work. So to be carnally minded is death. Now I want to go, and what does death mean? I want to go to, um, 
to the to Romans 8 and the King James. I mean, I'm sorry, and the Amplified. I know this is off the books, guy. This is the way the Lord's lead me. Thank you, Lord. And the Amplified will start with number one, two, and we'll walk through because it gives a greater depiction. Hallelujah. My goodness, that's good. And we're going to keep going through the scriptures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven here in the Amplified. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, no adjudging guilty of wrong for those who are in Christ Jesus, who live and walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the spirit. Remember, we just read in, um, in the book of Jeremiah that, those, that there's a curse put on the man that trusts in himself. Listen, I want to say something to you, just kind of, in love. You can say Jesus is Lord and he is. You can say he's your savior and he is. But when it comes right down to it, if you're saying you're going to live by faith, it's going to take you completely out of the way because faith is the law. Faith is the spirit. Faith is a gift that God initiated, gave us for the purpose of us being able to walk reunited to the spirit. So it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh has no profit, but watch how the um, Amplified says it. Verse 2. Thank you, Lord. For the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the law of the new being. Remember, the structure of the new creation, the structure, the spiritual structure. Faith is the realm. Faith is... The faith realm is the spiritual structure of the invisible world. So here it is. For the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the law of our new being has freed me from the law of sin and death. Verse 3, for God has done. Thank you, Lord. For God has done what the law could not do, that it was... that could not do its power being weakened by the flesh remember i'm going to reiterate cursed with great evil is a strong man who trusts and relies on frail man and makes weak human flesh his arm whose mind and heart have turned from side and i, and I told you it's not like you're denouncing god but if you're doing it and you're saying it's faith that's not true it is here that is the faith of God that brings us to a place where it releases us from ourselves and we co-create with God. Um, for God has done what the law could not do. Am I in three? Yeah. For God has done what the law could not do, that it was power being weakened by the flesh, the entire, now listen, the entire nature of man without the Holy Spirit. Did you guys just hear that? That's what death compa is composed of. It's a life without the Spirit of God. And here it is again. Let us read it. For God has done what the law could not do, that it was power being weakened by the flesh, the entire nature of man without the Holy Spirit, sending his own Son in the guise of sinful flesh, and as an offering for sin, God condemned sin. The wages of sin is death. God condemned sin on the Son, sin in the flesh, subdued it, overcame it, deprived it of its power over all who accept the sacrifice. Verse 4. But I wanted you to get a hold of that. Man, it comprises of a weakness. It, it says the power being weakened by the flesh, the entire nature of human without the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine for one moment? I couldn't, but let's keep reading. So that the righteousness and just requirements of the law might be fulfilled and met in us who live, move, not in the ways of the flesh, but in the ways of the spirit. Our lives are governed by the standards and according to the dict are not governed by. Our lives govern not by the standards and according to the dictates of the flesh, but controlled by the Holy Spirit. Verse 5. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Lord. For those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires. You don't have to go there, but I want to go back to Ephesians 2, which gives you a picture. It says, in times past, we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. By nature, we are fulfilling the lust of the flesh and of the mind. Here it is right here. 
it's the flesh, and controlled by its unholy desires, set their minds and pursue those things which gratify the flesh, fulfilling the lust of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. According, it says, gratifying the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit are controlled by the desires of the Spirit, set their mind on, and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. Verse 6. Now the mind of the flesh, which is sense, reason, without the Holy Spirit, is death. Woo, listen to this. Man. Mm -mm -mm. Listen to this. Now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, is death, death that comprises all miseries arising from sin, both here and hereafter. But the mind of the Holy Spirit is life and so peace both now and forever. I, I have something here. Yeah. Speaking about this, on this place right here, the Holy Spirit is death and death comprised. This, this part right here, that the mind, the flesh, which is sense ruled, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. Now listen to me. Your natural mind is not able to think on the same level like God. It cannot compute what is beyond it. When faith comes, you're not thinking in the constraints of time or reason. Man. Since our, reasonings conform, since our reasoning conforms to the natural, it now becomes the determining factor of our possibilities to the natural man. In other words, what the natural man sees and does, what he sees, feels, and touches, that determines, man, the possibility of what you can do. That's why I said earlier that the mind is hedged in, the carnal mind is hedged in by its, by its um, carnal nature, its Adamic nature. That's why the renewing of the mind is vital. Listen here. In other words, it is not based on if a thing is logical. Sometimes people will say that, man, you're crazy if you're operating beyond the normal. In other words, the supernatural, you've heard that. Man, you're crazy. We're calling things that be not. You're seeing things that aren't there. Yeah, but listen to this. Um, the natural, in order, Sometimes people think you're crazy operating beyond the norm, but that is what faith is. It operates outside the norm. All things are possible when you believe. Logic keeps you in agreement with the natural world. Revelation is nothing more than God's logic revealed to man for man to be able to think and operate out of eternity. You and I are eternal beings. In the 17th chapter, we don't go there. I'm just quoting it. Jesus says, this is eternal life that you may know him and the son whom he sent. This is the eternal life that you may know. The word know is become one with. This is how you know. And this is what faith does. It operates out of the eternity. It operates in eternity. For the world we speak out of, remember when a, when a, um, when a realm is conceived, the realm we speak out of is so much greater than what you see here. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things that are seen did not come. Because you know why? Going back to, um, uh, to Romans, um, the eighth chapter, I want to read a translation. You guys don't have to go there. I'm just going to read it and keep moving. Uh, this is the Young, Young's translation. I just have it written down. I don't want you to go there. Because the mind of the flesh is Romans 8, 7, and 8. It says, because the mind of the flesh is enmity to God. For the law of God does not subject, for, to the laws of God, for it does not subject itself, for neither is it able, and those who are in the flesh are not able to please God. Do you see why it's so vital to understand, to live and move and walk in the spirit? I have another, um, let's see, where is it? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pertaining to, to the reasoning mind. Thank you, Lord. When we say that by faith, we understand that the world will frame. We're still on, on Romans. Don't move. But I'm just going here for a second just to um, magnify something. When we say that by faith, we understand by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Listen to me. By faith, we understand it's more than just understanding. It's perceiving and understanding. You have to be able to perceive beyond the natural. This is what faith 
does. It takes you out of reason. It takes you out of time and limitation. It takes you out of a carnal mind into the mind of Christ. It says, um, perceive, um, by faith we understand meaning perception, perceptive. Understanding you have to be able to perceive beyond the natural because reason and logic, listen to me, reason and logic is natural. It does not connect you to the realm of the spirit. Did you guys just hear that? Reason, man, get a hold of this. Reason and logic, that's not where faith operates. It cannot produce the eternal. It doesn't know creativity, reason and time. Reason and, um, and, um, and logic is absolutely belongs to the natural man. It says it does not connect you to the realm of the spirit. It connects you to the natural world. In other words, faith is the ability to believe beyond reason. Uh, we don't have to go there, but 2 Corinthians uh, 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, it says, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. For the pulling down of strongholds and vain imagination and things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Here it is right here. Reason, logic are things that are exalting themselves against the knowledge of God. In other words, the faith... Faith is the ability to go beyond the imagination, the vanity that exalts itself against another God. When we reason, when reason, now watch this, listen to this. When reason is absent, faith is present. Thank you, Lord. In other words, reason does not have the ability. Listen, whoo, thank you, Lord. Reason does not have the ability to comprehend creativity. It is in, orig in its original form. Uh, let, let me stop there for a moment. And I, I don't have scripture for this. I'm just going where the Holy Ghost is leading me. Remember when Jesus came to Peter and said, Peter, Peter, who, who do men say that I am? Well, some say you're this and some say that. No, no Peter, who, who, who do you say that I am? Right there and then, Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus was astound. Jesus says, whoa, Peter, Peter, you, you're blessed, Peter. Peter, you're blessed because flesh and blood, reasoning and logic that was not able to create in you that revelation. You were not able to see something that goes beyond your natural ability into another world, this world of the spirit, the, the mind of Christ. You were not able, he says, because flesh and blood. Peter, Peter, he says, you're blessed because flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Let me park there for a moment. When I say that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Right there at that very nanosecond when God asked Peter, who do men say that I am? And Peter came back with a revelation. At that particular moment right there, in that nanosecond, God separated Peter from every mortal, mere mortal concept, reasoning, logic that he ever had. And he took it out of Peter and he was able to create in him a phenomenon which was able to deposit by the words that he heard, he was able to deposit something in Peter that way, that was way beyond Peter's ability to comprehend. You guys hear what I'm saying? There was a creative uh, principle in what happened with Peter, and this is what faith does. There's a creative principle in every single word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's why it's impossible to please God because if it's not by faith then you're the one that's creating the thing and what is the image that you're portraying where wh whatever you're saying where did it originate they was it created by the very spirit of God just like Jesus told Peter Peter you did not receive this from flesh and blood flesh and blood could not have possibly allowed you to go into a place that was way beyond your comprehension of being able to grasp that's what faith does. It takes us out of the reasoning faculty and elevates us to a place that is so far beyond what you and I can imagine. For eye has not seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man the things that God has prepared, but faith. We're going there in a moment. It says, when reason is absent, faith is present. In other words, reason does not have the ability to comprehend creativity in its original form. That's why I wanted to deposit that right there, that creative revelation, ba-boom. And that's what I call faith. It's a creative revelation. When the word of God comes, it brings faith, and faith brings the substance of the very thing 
that you are hoping for. It makes hope real. Because why? Remember I said last week, it's a creative revelation. It's not just something that uncovers something. It's not like, see, now you see it. It was hidden before. Now you see it. No. It actually creates the substance of that thing. Let me, let me give you a picture. Remember I said faith does not ever come empty handed. It always brings something. It says that he, talking about Jesus and talking about the new creation, he who knew no sin, this is how you and I get justified. This is how we believe by faith. This is how we got justified. To be able to live in that place where constantly we engage with the Spirit of God so we can receive revelation. So revelation will become to you and to me what reason is to the natural man. Did you guys just hear what I said? That's where God has taken us. Revelation will become as common to you and to me, the new creation, because that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to keep us in a place of absolute liberty. It's supposed to, it will keep us in that elevated position. Why can we talk to storms? Why can we talk to demons? Why can we tell them, come out in the name of Jesus? It's not by might, it's not by power. It's by the very spirit that you heard the word come to you. And remember, I said, the moment you release the word of God out of your mouth, you're hearing, you're hearing the audible voice of God. Because that's, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, the Word was with God. Nothing was made that was made without the Word. And that Word is coming now, coming out of your mouth. And what is that Word? It says, and the Word became flesh. I'm not going to the Scriptures. I'm just going by where God is leading me. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld him as the only begotten, full of what? Glory. So now let's translate and meditate for a moment. That word that became flesh, we saw on flesh, we saw glory. So every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God has the essence, the presence, the creative principle in every word to bring us to a place where we come to understand. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Comprehend the creativity in its original form because now faith is the substance of things hoped for. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Oh, Lord, it's almost that time. Man, and it doesn't seem like I even was able to touch where God was taking me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, um, my goodness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm wondering whether to keep going or not. My goodness, I have so much more that I needed to share with you. But I'm just going to be obedient because of the time schedule. Um, we thank God. We thank God that whatever was said here tonight, I believe it was necessary. Whatever was said was enough to bring us to a place where we can start seeing how vital faith is. How we can see that we are not to be carnally minded is operating in sin, not that you're sinning. Listen to me, please. To be carnally minded is death. That means that you're operating under a lower level, much lower than God intended you to be, and to operate and live and move by, because it is the spirit that quickens. If we were to read, keep on reading, it says it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh has no profit. It says, if the spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised Christ Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal body, your mind, your eyes, and everything. Boy, I can keep going. But at this time, um, let's, um, let's do the tithe and the offerings. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. At this time, beloved, um, get your tithes ready and your offerings. And what God says pertaining to the tithe and the offering, he says, bring, bring the tithe, bring it, bring it into the storehouse, bring it into my house. For what purpose? So there will be meat in my house. The purpose of the tithe, and really, if we come right down to it, that 10% is not yours, it's his anyways. <laughs> the tithe belongs to the Lord. I don't want to touch it if it belongs to him. But he says, Bring the tithe into the storehouse and prove me now. With what? Herewith. The very tithe. Prove me now herewith, says the Lord. 
if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing for there's not room enough to contain. Get the picture. Are any of you expecting what you're saying, what I just quoted God is saying? Because if you don't expect it, you won't receive it. Remember, all things are possible to those who believe. I didn't even get to, to be able to touch or scratch the, the rich young ruler. Boy, he wanted to know how, to, how he could get eternal life. And Jesus brought him to his knees. We said, give it all up. Follow me. because You have treasures in heaven. He wasn't ready for that. And we're still holding on to a lot of the things we think belong to us. And we're applying it under our own natural power, sustaining it under our own ability when he's the one that upholds all things by the word of his power. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we will bring the tithe into the storehouse. We will prove you now here with the tithe and the offerings. Lord, you said you would rebuke the devourer. You said that you would open the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing when there's not room enough to contain. And we thank you, Lord that you said to prove you now here with. We'll prove you with the tithe and with the offerings, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you said through our obedience to your, through your challenge, you said to prove you, and we will, Father, in the name of Jesus. We will prove you now here with the tithe and the offerings. If you look at the screen, you will see where, where you can send your tithe, how you can send it. You can come here from Tuesday through Friday, 9 to 5, you can bring it to the office, or you can uh, go online at wordsoflife.com. You can see all those things on the screen right now. You can mail it in, or you could do your mobile. If you're a techie, you could do your mobile thing. Now remember, and there's so much I wanted to say. But one thing I'll say, as you bring the tithe, we'll just give you a moment to prepare that before the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. And we do thank you, Lord, right now that you're doing exactly what you said you would do. You're opening the windows of heaven for our brothers and sisters as they bring and present their tithe to you, Lord. I thank you that you rebuke the devourer. And I've seen personally with my own eyes the devourer rebuked. And before we go, I want to just leave this with you. And I didn't get there tonight. But let us not have no more distractions from the natural realm. And let's keep our eyes on our heavenly seat. Right next to where he's seated right now in heavenly places. God bless you. I love you. Remember, Jesus is Lord.